Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. Last Thursday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent shockwaves across the state with an action he took in Hillsborough County. DeSantis suspended the elected state attorney, Andrew Warren. This hour, we'll hear from DeSantis about why he made the surprising move. We'll hear recordings of him and we'll hear what critics of that decision have to say, including Andrew Warren. And I want to hear your thoughts. So if, if you want to weigh in on this, please email me at dj at wmnf.org. You can also text at 813-4330-885. Please sign your name if you do text us in. And joining us to talk about this and other important issues in Florida is former State, State Representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for Attorney General four years ago, and he was the former Florida insurance consumer advocate. Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Sean. Happy to be here, Sean. Thank you. I'm really glad you could join us because, you know, this is a very important topic, and uh, I hope that our listeners have a lot to say about this. I would like you to weigh in if you uh, support the governor's decision or if you oppose it, please let us know why. Um, so maybe the first thing before we have time, we'll have time throughout the whole hour to talk or, or part of the hour, at least to talk about the specifics of what happened last Thursday. But maybe the first thing I want to ask you, Sean, is what was your initial reaction when you heard that Governor DeSantis announced that he was suspending Hillsborough County's elected state attorney? I mean, I was shocked. And um, as someone who has been around politics a little while and has observed the governor, I didn't think I could still be shocked, but I was. I mean, that's uh, I know the governor engages in behavior that some of us would consider trolling, and I know he's very aggressive in certain things, and okay, I get it, but to remove the duly elected state attorney in Hillsborough County, in a county that vote, uh, Andrew Warren got more votes than the governor in this county, um, and he's been elected twice, and to really remove him because of things he said rather than things he did, uh, I mean, it's there's a very high standard to remove someone, first of all, under the Florida Constitution. There's a very high standard. It's incompetence, malfeasance, misfeasance, uh, drunkenness. I mean, there's a lot of words there. Um, but you don't remove someone that's been elected by the people unless there's very good reason. And this just doesn't meet that standard. So I was I was shocked. And we'll talk about what the, what the governor's reasons were for removing um Andrew Warren, as we go on through the hour, in fact, we'll hear what the governor said in his own words during that press conference in Hillsborough County last Thursday. But the, I guess the, the bottom line is that DeSantis's executive order focuses on how he signed, how Andrew Warren signed on to statements from prosecutors around the nation, pledging that they won't pursue criminal cases against people who seek or provide abortions or who seek or provide gender transition treatments. So I guess uh, let's hear the governor in his own words. Let's hear one of the uh, one segment from last Thursday's press conference with Governor DeSantis right as he was announcing the suspension of Andrew Warren. The Constitution of Florida has vested the veto power in the governor, not in individual state attorneys. And so when you flagrantly violate your oath of office, when you make yourself above the law, uh, you have violated your duty. Uh, you have neglected your duty and you are displaying a lack of competence uh, to be able to reform those duties. And so today we are suspending state attorney Andrew Warren effective immediately. That's Governor Ron DeSantis speaking last Thursday in Hillsborough County. He was actually at the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office on Falkenberg Road. When he made that announcement, he was flanked by several uh, law enforcement off officials from around the region, including the Hillsborough County Sheriff including the former police chief from Tampa, who we'll hear from later. So Governor Ron DeSantis says that Andrew Warren put himself above the law. Sean Shaw, your reaction to that? I, I, I'm almost speechless, uh, almost. Um, the governor is suspending the duly elected state attorney from Hillsborough County. So I might ask him who exactly is putting themselves above the law. If you don't like someone, if you don't like the policies they institute, there's a solution for that. It's called elections. Uh, and so you go after Andrew Warren in two years when he's up for re-election and you try to take him out that way. To suspend him in the middle of his term is is just, it's, it's, it is above the law. And just because you use words like flagrant, just because you use words like incompetence, don't make them true. 
If you can point to an actual case that Andrew Warren did or did not prosecute, um, then let's talk. But to, because he signed pledges and because he promised to do X, Y, or Z, those are not, um, that, that, is not that does not rise to the standard of removing someone from office. If you remember, um, Aramis Ayala was the state attorney in Orlando, and she made a blanket statement that says she wouldn't prosecute death penalty cases. And I would argue that blanket statement is, is much more egregious on the scale of removal or not removal than anything Andrew's pledged to do. She was not removed from office by Rick Scott. She had her budget slashed, but she was not removed from office. And so for Andrew to kind of sign some progressive policies and uh, reformative justice policies and to be removed from office for that, for pledges of what he uh, may do, um, it's just, it's too much, even for a governor who traffics in too much. I want to remind people that our guest is former state representative, Sean Shaw. He was the democratic nominee for attorney general four years ago. He's a Democrat from Tampa and you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday cafe. I'm Sean Canan. It is 10, 12 in the morning. And if you'd like to weigh in, you can text us at 813-433-0885. Please sign your name. And you can e email us at dj at wmnf.org. Later on in the show, I'll, I'll uh, take some phone calls as well. 813-239-9663. Doug in Clearwater writes, I don't like anything about DeSantis and I don't like Trump. And there are so many things that Trump could be locked up for. I don't really care if he is. And he says run in 2024. I guess he's talking to Donald Trump and, and possibly Ron DeSantis as well. And Doug's finishes his text by or his email by saying they're both punks. So thank you for that comment out there <laughs> in cyberspace, Doug. And if you'd like to weigh in, the text number is 813-433-0885. You can email DJ at WMNF.org. You mentioned, Sean Shaw, you mentioned Aramis Ayala, and she's actually on the ballot. We'll talk about the uh, the um, primary elections later on in the show, of course, but she is running for the Democratic nomination for attorney general for the state of Florida, the same position that you held uh, four years ago. Um, so, you know, we're, we've, we've talked a little bit about what DeSantis's um, complaints are or beefs are with Andrew Warren. Um, here's a, a minute long clip of DeSantis talking specifically about two of the things that he is accusing Warren of doing, which he believes raise, rises to the ability of, of suspending the elected state attorney in Hillsborough County, Andrew Warren. So here's it, again, a little bit more of Ron DeSantis speaking last Thursday. Uh, the prosecutor state attorney for this judicial circuit, uh, Andrew Warren, has put himself publicly above the law. In June of 2021, he signed a letter saying that he would not enforce any prohibitions on sex change operations for minors. And that's a debate that we're having mostly administratively and through medical licensing in Florida, but other states have enacted penalties on the people that would perform those, which are really disfiguring these young kids. And he said, it doesn't matter what the legislature does in the state of Florida, uh, he's going to exercise a veto over that. He's also instituted policies of, quote, presumptive non-enforcement. And this involves an array of different things. And you'll probably hear Sheriff Cronister and some of the other law enforcement officers talk about it. Uh, but that is not consistent with the role of a prosecutor. Yes, you can exercise discretion in an individual case, but that discretion has to be individualized and case specific. You can't just say you're not going to do uh, certain offenses. And then most recently, after the Dobbs decision was rendered by the U.S. Supreme Court, he signed a letter saying he would not enforce any laws relating to protecting the right to life in the state of Florida. Well, that was Ron DeSantis speaking last Thursday in Hillsborough County, talking about three of the different uh, things that he's mentioning that Andrew Warren has done, which led to him DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, suspending Andrew Warren, who is the elected state attorney in Hillsborough County. And our guest is former state representative Sean Shaw. Let's talk about one of them. The, the first one that Governor DeSantis mentioned, he mentioned that um, Andrew Warren has said he won't put people in jail, doctors or patients in jail, if they uh, uh, go for um, a sex assignment treatment, treatment, treatments for gender transition. Andrew Warren won't pe put people in jail for that. Is his uh, is the big transgression that the governor is talking about 
hey, there's no law in Florida against Congress, that. what? It's not illegal. The legislature has debates about a lot of things. So you're telling me you cannot make a statement about any issue that the legislature may pass a law about in the future, but has yet to prohibit today. Come on, man. Uh, I, the governor allegedly went to Harvard and Yale, but he does some outrageous things sometimes when it comes to the law. And usually he loses these cases once they make it to a judge. But um that's just, I think anyone would say on its face that that's the weakest one, that uh, Andrew Warren said he would do something uh, and what he's talking about is not prohibited. It's just a subject of discussion among legislators around the country. So, you know, that we might be jumping ahead a little bit, but let, that brings up the, a good question. So, you know, he's he has a law background. DeSantis has has an education, as you point out. He has to know that you can't fire somebody for saying that he wouldn't do something that's not even against the law yet. I'm, I'm simplifying it here, but he has to know that. So what would be the reason why DeSantis would even bring that up? Well, this is we're, we're wading into political territory now, but you asked the question. Uh, certainly, I think it's obvious. I think that when he's on a stage in Iowa, for the Republican nomination for president, he wants to be able to say, do you know what I did in Florida? I removed a woke, liberal, uh, out of control state attorney in Hillsborough County uh, because he wasn't doing what I wanted him to do. And I got rid of him. Allow me to do the same thing as president to those people up in DC that need it themselves. That's what he wants to say. That's what he wants to stay uh, at, a, at a county fair in Iowa when he's campaigning. For president that that's what this is about all these things he he does aren't to ultimately win because he usually doesn't it's for the initial impact whether it's you know all these all these kind of outrageous things he does he loses usually in the courts eventually so um i think this is a this is one though that you know it has to go to the state senate they have to decide on this and you can take a wild guess as to what you think will the state senate back up DeSantis, or will they cross him you know what they're going to do they're going to back him up so this will be a battle that will take place in the courts and we'll see. Um, but yeah, he knows that you can't um, fire someone uh, for something that we're just talking about and hasn't become prohibited in the law. Our guest is former state representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general four years ago. And you're listening to the Tuesday Cafe on WMNF. I'm Sean Canan. This is 88.5 FM. You might be listening on WMNF.org or on the WMNF app. It's 1019 in the morning. Well, since we're already wading into politics, I think this might be a good time to to ask you this question. So you are are talking about how politically DeSantis thinks that that um, this might be helpful for him in a in an election, a presidential election in getting the Republican nomination for president, which maybe years and years ago, we would have thought this was a crazy strategy and it would never work. But then along came 2016 and it obviously worked stupendously for President Trump, for soon to be President Trump, when he won the nomination and won the presidency um, using this type of ta tactic. Um, but Governor DeSantis has one more election that he should be concerned about, and that's coming in, in November. And you know, for a long time, I don't want to, I don't want to paint it uh, a rosy picture. Or I don't want to paint a, a different picture than it is. DeSantis has had a pretty huge lead in the polls over whoever, whichever Democrat or who, whoever is going to challenge him in November. But I have seen some polls lately, granted by liberal groups. Um, Progress Florida put out a poll yesterday or the day before, uh, where it, the the gap seems to be closing. If you can trust that poll, that. DeSantis might have, I mean, he's certainly favored to win at this moment, but he might have a, a race on his hands and it might be because of how much anger he's stirring in uh, in Florida right now um, among people who aren't on the right. No, the, and I, I know a little bit about that poll. I know the methodology. I know the poll uh, who actually conducted it. And that's a poll that I do trust. And I wouldn't say that uh, I, I'm not just saying that because it's a poll that I like the results of. That's one that I, I pay attention to when it comes out. And look, the poll said uh, Marco Rubio and Val Demings are tied. The poll said that um, in the generic ballot, Democrat and Republicans are tied. The poll also said Biden is still unpopular. So, you know, the poll ha must have had some truth to it uh, if you're looking at it from both sides. And the poll also said DeSantis's lead is shrinking. I think it was uh, four points over Charlie Crist and maybe 
seven or eight points over Nikki Chris, so uh, Nikki Free. So these are these are numbers that are tightening. And listen, you this is kind of to be expected. Roe v. Wade happened. Um, we've we've got mass shooting still going on. DeSantis is extremely polarizing. So you either love him or you don't like him at all. Um, and he's engaging in you know some of these activities that continue to make him uh, a contrast, a political contrast. Um, you know, there's a uh, there's a and this poll took place before Kansas, before that abortion referendum happened in Kansas, and it took place before the Senate just passed this Inflation Reduction Act. So. Uh, I would say that the trend lines, uh, I think, might be pointing a little towards my side. And I don't say that lightly. I am one that is usually um, pretty pessimistic about these things. And I'm like you for a long time. It just appeared that we were trudging towards uh, re-election here. But I am seeing signs of, uh, of life on my side. I am seeing signs that perhaps um, people don't like. That. It was one of the things that is the reason that Donald Trump lost. People don't want constant warfare, not just constant. And, and eventually it gets tiresome. It gets exhausting. Uh, and I think people eventually just, they want to break from it. And in Florida, uh, I know part of the reason we have this constant warfare and constant culture clashes is because I think the governor might not want to talk about rent and property insurance and, and other issues that aren't great here in Florida. So he knows that he can go back to his hits, which are uh, woke and don't say gay and critical race theory and all these things that get us all mad at each other uh, when we really ought to be mad at how expensive it is to live in this state. So you, you know what some of this is about. But um, I just think people don't want to be in a constant warfare. And it's getting that way in Florida. And um, although we have some pretty conservative statewide elected officials and the gerrymandered House and Senate is what it is, when you look at the registration, and you look at Florida itself, we are not um, as uh, as MAGA as I think our elected Republicans would have you believe. And I think uh, they may be coming in for uh, a rough landing here if they keep treating this state like Texas. Our guest is former state representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general in 2018. And you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. So going back to some of the reasons that DeSantis had for fight for getting rid of, for replacing Andrew Warren, the other one of the other things was that he said that Andrew Warren said he would not prosecute doctors or prosecute patients who seek abortions. Um, and Florida has a new law that says that after 15 weeks um, of abortion, an, an, an abortion can't happen. And But a judge has ruled that that's, that new law violates the state constitution. So, um, you know, is Andrew Warren way out of bounds by saying he won't prosecute doctors or patients? Andrew Warren was talking about a law that has been deemed unconstitutional by a judge. Um, and again, there's it's a pledge they're mad about. So not only can you not point to an actual case, the law itself that we're talking about has been deemed unconstitutional and the first district court of appeal, I believe is, is deciding that case right now. So to use, again, to use that as one of your reasons to remove the duly elected state attorney in Hillsborough County, it's weak uh, and he knows it's weak. And by he, I mean the governor. Well, we, so far we have heard from the governor, but let's hear from Andrew Warren himself. On Sunday, he released a video statement. He posted it on Facebook and, and he released it to the media as a video as well. So it, it's a very short statement, a couple minutes. So let's let's hear what Andrew Warren says and how he is responding to these claims and how he's responding to being suspended by Governor DeSantis. And we'll be right back after we hear from Andrew Warren. You're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. This is Tuesday Cafe. Ron DeSantis is trying to overthrow democracy in Florida. His plot to suspend me blatantly violates the most fundamental basis of our democracy, your vote. He's trying to overturn the results of a fair and free election and abusing his power to serve his own political ambition. I'm Andrew Warren. I've been elected twice as state attorney. We fought for public safety, fairness, and justice. We've aggressively prosecuted murderers, rapists, and any criminal who keeps parents like me awake at night. In our community, crime is low. Rights are protected, and we've invested in safety. I was elected because the people of this county share my vision for criminal justice, trust my judgment, and have seen our success. 
I swore to uphold the Constitution, and that's exactly what I've done. DeSantis is trying to take away my job for doing my job. He came down to Tampa, to Hillsborough County, to illegally remove me as part of some political circus. He did it because he wants to throw women and their doctors in jail based on a law that has already been found to violate Florida's Constitution. He did it because he wants to enforce a law that discriminates against our LGBTQ community, a law that, at this point, doesn't even exist. We won't let him get away with it. I'm committed to doing what the voters elected me to do, to serve, represent our community with integrity, build a 21st century criminal justice system we can be proud of. Because Ron DeSantis doesn't get to handpick Florida state attorneys, you, the people do. We've all seen the consequences of politicians who think they're above the law and can do whatever they want. That's why DeSantis and his abuse of power must be stopped. Let me be clear, I'm not going down without a fight. I'm a former federal prosecutor, the duly elected state attorney, a native Floridian and a proud American. I refuse to let this man trample on your freedoms, to speak your mind, to make your own healthcare decisions and to have your vote count. I hope you'll stand with me. Well, that was Andrew Warren in a video statement that he released on Sunday he said that the governor is trying to overthrow democracy. Andrew Warren says that he was illegally removed by Governor DeSantis. Your thoughts on that statement, Sean Shaw? I mean, I, I agree with everything Andrew said, and, and it should not go without saying that Andrew Warren is my good friend. Uh, I believe Andrew's a very good lawyer. I believe he's a very good man. I believe he's a very good husband, a very good father. I am uh, Andrew and I campaigned together in 2016, um, and I got to know him very well. and. Um, I love him. He's he's a really good guy. He's also a great state attorney. State attorney is a hard job. It's a hard job for people to like you at because the job is to lock people up. And so you will, you're going to always run into a tension with the community and uh, particularly with the African-American community and how you're interacting. And it's a tough job. And Andrew is beloved in this community for the job he's done and the fair way he's done it. And the reasons that we love him are the reasons that the governor removed him essentially. Um, and so um, that's not lost on me either, but Andrew's right in everything he said. Listen, I just wanna say, Sean, there will come a time where the governor is a Democrat. I don't know when that time is, but it will come. And we are setting some precedents that I hope everyone understands what that means. It means if I'm the Democratic governor and there's a state attorney in, what's a Republican county? Clay County. And if there's a state attorney over in Clay County that says, for example, he's a big proponent of the NRA and he refuses to, he signs an NRA pledge saying, I'm not going after people for ticky tack gun violations. That means the Democratic governor can remove that state attorney in Clay County for signing such pledges that go against my political philosophy. We're going down a road here that is, it's bad. And I don't want to go down this road. I don't want a Democratic governor to have the power that DeSantis is exercising. I don't want to go down this road at all, but I just want us all to be aware DeSantis is what the power he's trying to exercise as governor. Uh, it is it is creating some precedents that are very scary. And I hope that everyone understands that um, what's good for the goose is going to be good for the gander at some point. And there's going to be a lot of hollering and screaming when the Democratic governor does the same thing that uh, Ron DeSantis is doing. Our guest on Tuesday Cafe is former state representative Sean Shaw, a Democrat from Tampa. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general four years ago, and this is 88.5 FM. It's 1030 in the morning, and I've been asking people to weigh in with their thoughts on Governor Ron DeSantis removing Andrew Warren from his elected state attorney position in Hillsborough County. And so let me read a couple of emails. Uh, this will give me a chance to get caught up a little bit. Char in Largo writes, and maybe you can answer this, Sean, what can citizens do besides calling the governor to get Mr. Warren reinstated? I think right now what you can do is contact your state senator because they are about to be the jury essentially that's going to uh, determine whether to accept this recommendation from the governor or reject it. Now we think they're very likely to accept it, but you should be inundating uh, all of the state senators and let people know how mad you are that um, this is not just a normal, Thing you're you disagree with from a policy level this is 
an attack on your vote. This is a, a an attempt to change the will of the voters. So I would be reaching out to your state senators and making sure they know how mad you are. Um, you know, there's been rallies and protests uh, around uh, this issue. I would be engaging in those too. But I think what you can do right now is to contact your state senator, state senator. So I don't know if that is, uh, you might be Daryl Roussan in this area. It might be Jeff Brandis. It might be Janet Cruz. But um, you know, those, those people around here are who you ought to be contacting because they're about to listen to this and they need to know how mad you are and that this is not just a policy disagreement. This is not you sending an email to your elected officials because you're mad about, a, you know, what teachers can say in the courtroom. This is not an email that you're, I mean, in the classroom that you're not mad about public education. This is sending an email that you are mad that the governor removed someone that you voted for. And it matters that Hillsborough is a blue county too. Like that matters. It matters that we, Andrew Warren, a Democrat, essentially is going to be replaced in a overwhelmingly Democratic county. He's gonna be replaced with someone who was appointed by DeSantis. And I don't know what her voting registration is, but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say she's probably a, a Republican. Um, that's not okay to all it, although that is less I think significant than these other reasons, it is significant that you would take the will of the voters in a democratic county and essentially change the partisanship of the state attorney in this way. Um, that's that, that's just another reason why this is this is all. I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and you're listening to 88.5 FM. Our guest is former state representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general in 2018. And uh, we have a email here from Karen in Dunedin, and she says technically what DeSantis said would be true. I think she's referring to something about like, uh, you know, removing someone from office if they've, uh, per, if they've violated their oath of office, for example. But Karen goes on to say, but standing up against laws that are wrong is the right thing to do. That is why we have to get Ron out. So thank you for those comments, Karen in Dunedin. If you'd like to weigh in, 813-239-9663. I'll take some phone calls in a little bit. Or you can text us at 813, uh, what is it, 433-0885. Sorry about that. That's the text number or dj at wmnf.org. So um, during DeSantis's press conference at the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office last Thursday, he was flanked by the sheriffs of Hillsborough County, Pasco County, and Polk, all of whom spoke. And when I listened to them, they described this scenario that, quite frankly, seemed a little foreign to me. Maybe I'm, I lived a sheltered existence, but they were describing a scenario of very high crime in the region. And then there were these pretty shocking statements that came from former Tampa Police Chief Brian Dugan. He was talking about how bad crime is in Tampa. Dugan said it, he, he felt like he and his wife should be able to go out to dinner at night in our community without fearing they're going to get jacked. That was his word. Um, so I, I'm going to play um, some of what former Tampa Police Chief Brian Dugan said and tell us, you know, if, I'd like to hear Sean Shaw's reaction after this, but also you at home, call us at 813-239-9663 or email dj at wmnf.org and tell us if this is the Tampa and the Tampa Bay area that that you're familiar with as well, because it sounded a little bit foreign to me. Here is, um, here is Dugan. Um, Sorry, former Tampa Police Chief Brian Dugan. You know, Governor, it's um, it's a bittersweet day, quite frankly. We should not be here. We should have had someone who did their job. The governor should not have had to come to Hillsborough County and clean up our mess. And that's really what it comes down to. And I appreciate the fact and admire the fact that you have the intestinal fortitude to stand here and do this. And this is a governor who's not afraid to stand alone in the storm. And I will always stand by. So there's probably no one more in the room who, uh, that's more frustrated with Andrew Warren and me and Sheriff Chronister. And he spoke. And I will try to make this brief. But let me tell you something. Andrew Warren is a fraud. Yeah, did you get that? <laughs> Look, I've never been good at sugarcoating anything. That's probably why it took me 28 years to become chief of police. He's a fraud. He has misled the people of Hillsborough County. 
you remember back during the riots, we arrested 67 people one night. And then he, what, a few weeks later, he has a press conference. And what does he say in his press conference? He says that there were no acts of violence, no property damage. He must not have read the police report. There were pictures of a police car with broken windshields. As the cops tried to get out of the cars, protesters pushed their door shut on them and wouldn't allow them out of the cars. So when you say there's no acts of violence, when you say there's no property damage in a press conference where I come from, you're lying. Okay? I'm not elected. I was appointed. I'm not running for office right now. I'm here because I believe in keeping this community safe. I have two children and a wife that are residents of Hillsborough County in the city of Tampa. It's about accountability and us being able to go out for dinner at night and not feel like we're going to get jacked by somebody. Yeah. Those 67 people that got arrested, Andrew Warren said in his press conference that he would work with local law enforcement to expunge those arrests. He does not have the ability to expunge, do an administrative expungement on those arrests. You know how many articles have been written about how he expunged those arrests? How would you like to be one of those 67 people that got arrested and you think that that arrest has been expunged? Ask Andrew Warren how many of those expungements he did. And the answer will be zero. Not a single arrest has been expunged. He has misled our community and it's time that we that our governor stepped in. And like I said, this is a terrible day that our governor had to come and clean up our mess. Thank you. Well, that was a few minutes of Brian Dugan, who was the former Tampa police chief, talking about uh, his experiences, I guess, in Tampa and Hillsborough County recently, where he's apparently he and his wife are nervous every time they go out to, to eat at night. Um, so I'll ask my guest, former state representative Sean Shaw, is that your experience? Have you been able to go out to eat without feeling you will be jacked? Sean, uh, it, it is entirely too early in the morning for my blood pressure to be this high after that foolishness that I just heard. Did you hear any of these complaints prior to the governor coming down here to do that performative press conference? Were you, was crime out of control? Was crime too high? Was Andrew Warren not supporting law? You didn't hear any of this, but the governor comes down here and everyone has to be a puppet on a string. Um, so particularly, and, and let me answer your question. No, of course you feel safe. In fact, the mayor herself, a former police chief came out with a statement that said Tampa is safe, crime is down. So thank God Dugan is not the chief anymore. And no, he was never elected. And yes, he was appointed because you don't win office talking like he's talking. But I want to talk about the sheriff a little bit because he was the one that I was the most disappointed in. And that's the Hillsborough County Sheriff who uh, had a lot of us fooled apparently that he was nice and moderate and cool. And, um, but his performance at that press conference was the most surprising. Um, the way that he talked about how uh, law enforcement couldn't work with Andrew and didn't like Andrew, all I've heard in his public statements prior to this press conference were the exact opposite, that he and Andrew and the public defender had a great relationship, that he respected Andrew Warren, that he thought Andrew was doing it. I mean, these are public statements. Andrew Warren endorsed the sheriff in 2018, and the sheriff trumpeted that bipartisan endorsement as something that he respected a lot. Heard none of this, what we heard at this press conference, but the governor comes in town and I guess we all got to start playing our part and he gets on stage and kicks Andrew while he's down. I I, I thought I was most disappointed in our sheriff's comments because they I thought they came out of nowhere. Um, I'm not surprised at Dugan and quite frankly, um, even if you take everything Dugan says as true, which I don't, take everything he said as, as, as true, None of that still is a justification for the governor to remove the duly elected state attorney here in Hillsborough County. It's just a reason for Dugan to be pissed. And it's a reason that if you want, you run against Andrew in the future. But it's not a reason, uh, a legal justification to remove Andrew. So um, that was just a tough press conference to swallow. I'm used to the governor acting like that. But uh, 
I'm used to Ashley Moody acting like that, who was also at the press conference. But man, it, it was tough to see the Hillsborough County Sheriff up there um, kicking Andrew while he was down. And we'll hear from Ashley Moody in a little bit as well. But I want to remind people that our guest is former State Representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for Attorney General four years ago. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. This is 88.5 FM. It's 1041 in the morning. And our topic today is, at least this part of the hour, is we're talking about Andrew Warren, the elected state attorney of Hillsborough County, being suspended by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And Sean, we, we have uh, several people on the line. So I'm going to take a phone call. Uh, and see what, what people have to say about this. So Clark, you're on the air in Ybor City. What would you like to say? Did you call on me, Sean? You're on the air, Clark. Oh. Hi, hey. <laughs> uh, I've only met Sean Shaw twice in my life, once at his uh, uh, campaign kickoff at Alex Sinks, and then the other day where I told him how unhappy I was. He was not the attorney general um, candidate. He is just the best. We are so lucky to have him here in uh, Tampa and the I just want to mention one other I didn't get I forgot to I didn't think to tell it to Sean when I was saw him last time but another egregious thing uh, DeSantis uh, did I'm, I'm I was on the soil and water conservation district board in uh, um, 2018 and I'm running again and there was a, a bill signed uh, by DeSantis in the middle of filing week which changed the filing requirements for um, candidates for that office so Wednesday at midnight during filing week so uh, directing the supervisor elections disqualify everybody that had been qualified and bring them in for additional um, for ad additional um, uh, paperwork and uh, things to be done and this that's such a horrible precedent people are already and the person I'm thinking of the most is Eric Challenger, a young black man in Apollo Beach who was running for one of the seats. And he did not run again. He should have been able to be qualified. And it's also racist the way that they're saying you have to be a farmer because so many you know, so few farmers are there. So I just wanted to add that into the mix on Ron DeSantis. You know, how, how can he be a Harvard Law graduate and not know how outrageous the things he's doing? So thank right. you. Thank you for those thoughts, Clark. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Sean, any comments on that? On that? No, I, I appreciate those kind words. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, these things, you know, I, I'm not in office right now and I've enjoyed my time off. Uh, I've been fishing a lot and enjoying Tampa Bay, but I can't, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that this sure gets my blood boiling in a way that I want to get back and do something. Because um, I, I just... It's hard to stand by and see DeSantis do this and and not want to do something more. As some of your callers and emailers were saying, what more can we do besides just yell and scream? Um, and and certainly it makes you want to get back in the arena because, listen, I, Sean, I understand elections have consequences. Like, OK, I, I, you get to a point as conservative a judge as you want. Fine. You get to a point as obnoxious a Surgeon General and Secretary of State as you want, which he's done. Fine. You get to do that. But there's certain things you don't get to do just because you won the election. And this is one of them. You don't get to remove other elected officials that you disagree with their philosophy in an office that you don't even um, have control over. So that that's 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 above and beyond. And it's really what's frustrating in this case. Well, let's take one more call right now. Uh, we'll go back to the lines in a little bit as well. But here's Jennifer in Spring Hill. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, one thing. I'm neither political party, so I'm not saying this just, you know, as an anti-Republican, but just um, the fact that Victor Orbach was speaking at CPAC. I mean, the Republicans are really getting disturbing, and DeSantis is doing all these stunts, and this is just another one, because this is like a pre-crime, because somebody says they're going to do something. He hasn't done it yet, so you don't remove him just because <laughs> something they say. And I mean, that right there is pretty creepy. And just the fact that as a single woman going into camp, a lot of times as a political activist, I've been there in, at night, all sorts of neighborhoods, and I've never felt unsafe all these years. So and when I go out with friends, I never feel unsafe there. So just throwing that out there. Jennifer, <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks so much. 
Thanks so much for those thoughts, Jennifer. Appreciate you calling in. Let me read this before we go back to um, our conversation directly. Let's let me read this email that came in from Richard. He says, as a first generation Cuban born and raised here in Tampa, it's so concerning that even Republican Cubans and Hispanics do not see the comparability of the DeSantis and Trump decisions to previous dictatorships. All that's happening is reminiscent to what dictatorship has done. So here's Richard, who has experience with Cuba, and he's uh, calling these actions uh, similar to dictatorships. Sean? Yeah, this is this is not how it's supposed to work. Um, if you remember when you played that audio from Ron DeSantis, when he said he's removing state attorney, you heard all the cheers in the background and everybody just saying, you know, how great that was. That's not what this is. A, everything is not me versus you. Everything is not my party versus your party. I, I've said before, you know, when someone wins an election, they know not, they not, they not only represent the people that voted for them. They also represent the people that didn't vote for them. Uh, and I, Ron DeSantis is about the worst I've ever seen it not representing those that didn't vote for him. He's the governor of all of Florida. Uh, and I understand he's the Republican governor of Florida and I understand that he gets to act like that. But man, certainly uh, you shouldn't be ignoring uh, the tens of thousands of people that voted for Andrew Warren just because um, you disagree with some letters and pledges that he signed. This is, we're, we've been here before and I don't want to sound like a, a an old uh, an old timer, which I guess I'm getting there, but everything becoming this zero sum game of me versus you is not good for this country. It's not good for this state. And I don't know how we get out of it because you have to gauge in at both sides because we've just got this thing going, but man, it, it turns into things like this, John. And it, it turns into when my party gets in power, we have to do the same thing um, to combat what we think's been done to us. And then we've got this cycle going and it's just, it's tough. And that, the, the caller from Spring Hill, I think is a really good example of um, this is this is something that's just wrong because it's wrong. It's not wrong because he did it and Andrew's a Democrat and DeSantis is a Republican. It's wrong because you just don't do this. This isn't done. Yeah, thanks for that call, Jennifer. And our guest is former state representative, Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general four years ago. Eric from Riverview writes in, and this is uh, really an interesting question that I think that uh, people should think about. He says, didn't DeSantis just say he was not going to follow federal law regarding LGBTQ rights? Who will remove DeSantis for not following federal law? So uh, does, you know, he's he's looking down from the state perches down at the counties. Well, what about the fed, feds looking at the governors who aren't following law? Well, I mean, we could have a whole nother show that talked about the hypocrisy of some of this. And, and you know, I, I saw an article the other day where, you know, certain sheriffs have signed this pledge about constitutionality and what they will and won't do. Uh, none of them have been removed from office who have signed that pledge um, uh, either. So this is hypocrisy. You know what this is about. It looks like a duck. It smells like a duck. It quacks like a duck. Uh, Andrew's a Democrat and progressive, and that's why he was yanked. Uh, no one else was subject to this um, because the governor ain't pissed at no one else but Andrew. So yeah, um, th there's a lot of hypocrisy going on, but that's why the voters have to sift, sift through this. Clay in Lando Lakes is uh, wants to talk about uh, Ch Chief Dugan. So go ahead. You're on the air, Clay. Yep. Yes. Thanks for taking my call, Sean. And uh, thanks for being on the show, Sean. Yes. Um, you know, it's time for you to get back in the game, my friend. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I can't lie. I'm feeling it. it it's time. So, um, you know, Dugan's got no room to talk. He wasn't a very good uh, police chief, in my opinion. Um, so and his words are ringing so hollow. He's just trying to bolster the position of a governor who really has no position. But my biggest question is this. Since the governor is violating the Constitution by taking Andrew Warren, suspending him without having met the language in the Constitution for, uh, you know, malfeasance and all those things, can't he be sued for violating the Constitution? In other words, is there legal action to be taken and who's, who's at, uh, who has the right to do so? The voters of Hillsborough County? Who? Thanks, Clay. 
I now, if you are, I think Andrew has an independent cause of action to go to a court and try to deal with what's happened to him. But if you're talking about how you would attack the governor, that is probably impeachment or something like that. And um, you you know as well as I who was in control of the Florida House of Representatives and the Florida Senate. So um, that that's it's uh, it's unfortunate that uh, there's no one to hold DeSantis accountable when he oversteps his bounds uh, and when he accuses everyone else of overstepping their bounds. And so I'm I'm also going to tell you. I believe that super I believe supervisors of elections are probably his next target in terms of removing some of those, particularly in Democratic counties. He's going to accuse them of of not doing what they're supposed to be doing and then, um, you know, trying to replace them with flunky. So this is not a if he can do this to Andrew, um, he can do this to a lot more um, offices, too. So I, I would just make sure that we. That's why you have to make a big deal about this. That's why you have to protest and yell and scream and call your elected officials and let them know that we're not going to stand for this. And that's why Andrew's got to, which he is, uh, commit himself to fighting this all the way, which he is, uh, get on TV nationally and let the rest of the country know, look, imagine this guy is president of the United States. I mean, just the, the rest of the country kind of needs to understand what we're dealing with in Florida. He just removed a state attorney here in Hillsborough County. If he's in the White House, imagine who he's removing and what he's doing and what he's trying to do. So, um, yeah. Thanks for the call, Clay. And our guest is former State Representative Sean Shaw. He was the Democratic nominee for Attorney General four years ago. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And you're going to get challenged by this one, Sean. So I'll, I'll send this email to, to you to, to respond to. Jeff from Newport Ritchie writes, back during the Trump years, one of the things that Democrats harped on was the president's intent to do something illegal. And I, I should emphasize intent to do something illegal. Now, Warren has signed off on his intent to disregard the law. And suddenly that standard is not good enough anymore. That's what Jeff is asking. I, I appreciate that, Jeff. I, I would tell you, I'm looking at this from a legal point of view. I'm the standard for, and I think what you're talking about is we would yell and scream about President Trump and his intent to do something illegal. Um, the basis for his actual impeachment was not his intent to do something illegal. When he was impeached, he was impeached because of things he actually did. And so that's the that is the parallel I would draw to what we're talking about with Andrew Warren. He's getting removed for pledges and letters He's getting actually removed. Action is actually being taken against him, um, not just us yelling and screaming on MSNBC and CNN. But that's a good that's a good email. Yeah, thank you for that email, Jeff. And um, uh, John in Tarpon Springs writes that I believe the governor's out, an office announced in advance of his speech that it was going to cause a liberal meltdown. To say that his action was not political is a joke to me, and he thanks us for the show. And so that's right. One of uh, DeSantis's spokespersons, um, I don't know if she was acting in her official capacity at the time or just as a citizen, but she did say on Twitter, I think it was, that li liberals were going to melt down. And so that made us all put put our eyes on this press conference to know that something was going to happen. Your that's thoughts? That's called political gaslighting, Sean, to say uh, liberals are going to go crazy about this and then do something that is obnoxious. And then when people say this is too much, see, I told you they were going to go crazy. That is textbook definition of political gaslighting. And I'm not falling for that. If I'm mad about something, I'm mad about it, whether you think I ought to be mad about it or not. And this is something that uh, is... Uh, just over uh, over the top, legally uh, and politically. Well, let's take a call from Fran in Largo. Hi, Fran, you're on the air. What would you like to say? Oh, thank you for taking my call. All I want to say is uh, what Ron DeSantis is doing is uh, it's fascist tactic. And we I hope we are finally starting to realize this. This is fascism in the works and we can't let it go much further that's that's what i wanted to say thank you all right thanks fran is that too strong a word sean i i don't think it is i mean you're removing someone that's been elected because you don't agree with their political beliefs you tell me what you think that is i mean it i think it speaks for itself and and you know again i, I just gotta this i gotta repeat this the political theater of the attorney general and all these sheriffs and the former chief of police standing on that stage with DeSantis while he did that, I think 
that quite frankly, a lot of those uh, other elected officials ought to be ashamed that they were used as props um, in this uh, in this theater, but that's for them and their hearts to work out. That's for them when they look in the mirror to work out, not for me. Our guest is former state representative Sean Shaw. Four years ago, he was the Democratic nominee for attorney general and the Republican nominee who won the general election was Ashley Moody. And since we mentioned it earlier, let's listen to a minute and a half of what Ashley Moody, Florida's attorney general, who comes from this community, uh, said on the day that the governor suspended Andrew Warren, the elected state, um, state attorney in Hillsborough County. When Andrew Warren first took office, he proudly joined with prosecutors from New York, Washington, L.A., and said, I will not enforce and be tough on crime. <laughs> proudly, I will not be tough on crime. And thereafter, we saw repeatedly his refusal, his outright statements, I will not enforce this law. I will not enforce that law. I will not do this. Let me tell you who makes the laws and decides what's criminal. It's you. It's the people of this state through their elected representatives. They decide what the law should be for the protection of their communities and their families. An executive cannot come in and eradicate that, do away with that, ignore that, because that's what creates instability. That, that's what creates crime across this nation and within Florida. And when you see prosecutors out there that blame the victims or blame businesses for not having better security and not themselves for not putting criminals behind bars, when a prosecutor puts crime above law and order, you're going to have a problem. Law enforcement knows that. They deal with it every day. And that is why when folks around this nation started talking about reducing police forces, defunding police, our governor stood up and said, oh no, how do we increase funding? How do we give our police raises? How do we recruit more to the state of Florida? Well, that's Ashley Moody, Florida's attorney general. She hails from the Hillsborough County area. She ran against and defeated Sean Shaw, our guest, four years ago. Uh, you're chuckling, Sean, what's up? That's the grossest uh, that's just gross. Uh, it's gross in a lot of ways. One, the attorney general is not the cheerleader for the damn governor. The attorney general is the highest ranking law enforcement officer in this state, independently elected. And it just sickens me that she has allowed herself to be reduced to being the governor's cheerleader. And essentially, she's the governor's general counsel. That's one. Two, you know what, you know what um, leads to instability, Sean? It's when you challenge elections. Ashley Moody wrote a brief in support of decertifying the election that, and quite frankly, um, I believe the Republican Attorney General Association also has been found to have funded some of the January 6th insurrection stuff. Miss me with her empty pleas of stability and respecting the will of the people and all of that foolishness. That was political theater of the 10th degree. And if you listen to her, you realized it was. Andrew Warren, if he said, I'm I'm the soft, I want to be the softest prosecutor in the country on crime. You know what? You know what? That still doesn't rise to the level of anything that he could be removed from office for. If the people of Hillsborough County want to elect that, that's what they get to do. And if you want to try to beat him for something he's said in a letter he signed and a pledge he signed, then you beat him at the election, uh, the next election. But for her to stand up there. Uh, and to rah-rah the governor and to do that, I just, man, my blood pressure is high all over again. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> back on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Sean. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thanks so much. Sean Shaw is a former state representative. He was the Democratic nominee for attorney general four years ago and the former Florida insurance consumer advocate. I want to thank John Dunn for answering phones. And thank you. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan. Thanks to all the calls, listeners that called in and emailed and texted. If you like the programming on 88.5 FM, please consider making a donation at WMNF.org. In this time slot tomorrow, Shelly will host Midpoint, and she'll look at Russia's efforts to create chaos in U.S. elections. Next up is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger. Their guest is Rooster and the Till chef Farrell Alvarez, and they'll talk about the food scene in Tampa Bay. 
And I hope that they uh, don't think that people will get jacked if they go out to dinner. That's coming up after NPR headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening to 88.5 FM.